Welcome back everyone to you know the last days of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Mokalover, and it's about November 29th, 1970, which actually, oh, I've already gone to war with Kazakhstan. I forgot about that. But yeah, apparently we're invading the Kazakh peoples and they're going to love it. So I guess that's why I stopped playing until I had you guys come back or we, I started re-recording some more. So cool. We haven't finished all the stuff on the right side, but I want to go down and do the people's economy first. Just get a little bit more economic growth and some more civvies. In the years of warlordism, since the West Russian War, we have prioritized military production to the de detriment of the living standards and conditions of both the industrial proletariat and the population as a whole. While we still need to prepare for the coming war against the Germans, we no longer need to engage in military spotanism. The Soviet economy exists to serve the Soviet people. With the Union reunited, it's time for us to increase civilian production, raise up the Soviet worker, and construct a rational economy based on the needs of the people. As we are blitzing through Kazakhstan, which unfortunately, I wish I would take... I wish they would take Uzbekistan and Turkmenistan too, and Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan and Xinjiang. I think it'd be great if they could actually do that, but maybe that's just me. Cool, so we're done with artillery, which is great. Land auction, we're done with as well, which is awesome, awesome, awesome. Let's get some more resources, shall we? We shall. Couple comments. Uh, someone said, you know what, it's probably best to wait to do your land auction until you get you know the research bonuses, which I agree with. Um, as we saw from yesterday, the AI didn't even do that. Even with bonuses, they didn't even do that. So that's a probably good thing to do. Instead of focusing on the land auction extremely, just uh, just a whole bunch, maybe. Focus on artillery and guns maybe first. And maybe more land night attack and stuff like that. So maybe that's a strategy to try out. Another one, uh, some people recommend I do Ching China in the End of New Beginning mod. Um, at the time of this recording, I would like to do more End of the Beginning mod. And I'll get there. Just, you gotta give me a little bit of time. And let's see, building slots, expertise, ooh, ah, my way to grab that one too, the vastness of Russia. Even with the loss of its vast western territories, Russia remains one of the largest nations of the planet. As a result, it is overflowing with resources, waiting to be exploited and harnessed for the needs of the Soviet people. With almost half, with almost all free Russian territory now under, United, under the leadership of Grand Marshal Zhukov, it's time for us to exploit the economic opportunities that Russia possesses, utilizing its great potential to improve our industry and secure our self-sufficiency, which is incredibly important. And there goes the Kazakhs, and we have 47 divisions ready against the Siberian Republic, which apparently won against Cheeto, which is disappointing because, well, frankly, like I said, I wanted um that one other nation to win, the Divine Mandate, so I could beat him up again. But we're going back to Kamchatka, and we're going to have a great, great time. All right, look at that. Now, we got point. We got 1% more GDP growth because of that focus, so now our economy is growing faster than our national debt. Ah. <sighs> It still doesn't feel very good. Uh, let's renew Soviet patriotism. Break the earth. Oh, I like agriculture, though. The life of the farmer in a Russian motherland is hard and unforgiving. The cold and fertile soil yields li little even to the most tenacious of planters. Before the Great Patriotic War, we had access to the breadbasket of Ukraine, and since its loss, our people have been often faced deprived of what... Uh, or faced deprivation and hunger. We are forced to make do with what we have if we are to once again fully feed our people and our armies we must break the earth, invest in new agricultural tools and practices, and find ways to improve the fertility of our soil, which is good. And we also went with Yakov Lev last time, as you guys recommended, and we can core one of these places. Um, I'm not sure which place is good enough for this. Two million and Kreisel, Pavlodar. Yeah, we'll do this area first. Kaisel Orda. Which which one is that one? Amlolnsk. Akmolinsk. Um I can't really tell you which one it is. Oh, I prefer for the war though. I'll just do with this one. It doesn't really matter. We're gonna spend a lot of PP getting that stuff done and a grand showdown. Let's get some more preparations. Actually, let's grab the one that gives them more political power first. We're going to lose some war support because that's what the, what the Siberian Republic is doing against us, which is fine, whatever. I don't really care. We're going to probably win anyways. I hope we'll win. That would suck if we lost. All right. So we can't do this side because we did not maintain the WRS military strength. So it is what it is. We shuffle the committee assignments. Oh, well. You know, if you want to read about that, please go right ahead. Oh, nice, nice, nice. And the people's executive will probably do that one, uh, maybe, maybe not. Spend, uh, don't really cap, we'll do it anyways, why not? But let's go ahead and keep doing this. Address the Iranian problem. If you like to read about that, please go right ahead. Which is very, very nice. Which I think I'll read next. The American example, which is something we probably want to do. Oh, industrial equipment goes up. I like that. So if you want to read about the Soviet lineage, please go right ahead. But we'll do 
Oh, some technology next, shall we? Yes, we shall. Yes, yes, yes. And then more soft attack. T-62s. T-64s become T-72s. Not bad, not bad. And we almost have enough for fallback lines. Thank you very much. And which we will read about looking at history. Oh, if you'd like to read about better agriculture methods, first of all, please go right ahead. We stand in the tradition of the Red October, the greatest social revolution in the history of humanity which liberated millions of oppressed oppression and forged our great Soviet state. Yet we must also face the reality that the lofty ideals of Marx and Lenin nearly died in the fires of the Great Patriotic War where the revolution was unable to resist the diabolical Nazi war machine. We must learn from our triumphs and our defeats and forge a new path. From the ashes of past defeats, a new Soviet Union will rise wreathed in the ideals of October, but ready to face our enemies sword in hand. Uh, let's go do... Oh, we can do this stuff, but I don't feel like it. I already did the other ones that give us like bonuses to research and... and uh, academic base. So, the American example. Before the Great Patriotic War, the Americans and Soviet people stood at odds with many Americans afraid of our social system of government. Yep. During the Great Patriotic War, and ever since, our interests have been aligned. Today, the Americans have much to show us from their impressive military and industry. We should seek to emulate their example and should not let our political differences define us. After all, our Soviet state was born in the fires of a great revolution, but so was that of the Americans. Perhaps we aren't so different, after all. And get better uh, equipment? Sign us up. The Reflections. <clears throat> Grand Marshal Grigory Zhukov stood in his private study with a glass of vodka in his hands, like me with my coffee, in front of him, with a large window that overviewed Arkhangelsk and the surrounding region. As he looked out, he noticed how much the city had grown since the days of the Great Patriotic War and the inevitable loss to the Germans. The USSR had broken down in the days following, and the anarchy spreading across the country. Warlords soon took the place of a government, many of them not harboring the ideas of the Union, however. In these chaotic days, Zhukov tried to stay positive. He and his armies had survived and fled to the safety of the northern regions, hoping to one day reform and march in Moscow to free from the dark hand of the Reich. Zhukov looked through the many books he had, one on warfare and literature, both classic and contemporary. The study was decorated not as lavishly as some of the citizens of the Republic would have thought. However, it did have some of Zhukov's favorite hobbies. A fish tank was located in the room, inside was a few of the disgust fish. As Zhukov flipped the cover of the last book he had, he walked back over to his desk, and where he thought about the last conflict he fought against the Germans. Less than 20 years after they had been sent trudging back from Stalingrad and Moscow, the Reform Red Army had begun an attack on Moscow, hoping to free the people who had lived under the Iron Fist. They had made good progress at first. Zhukov had astonishingly come close to liberating the Reichskommissariat, however. The tide soon turned, and they had to been pushed back. Since that day, when they had been pushed back, Zhukov had still believed that they would finally win. Our time has come. We decided to decrease Coring Town, which is good. And, well, we still have our ships doing what we do, because Admiral Yumashev is a great man coming from the far east. Get more polit uh, political power that way. Barely, though. Uh, some more forms looking towards war. Army professionalism, as much as I'd love to do that one, I don't think we'll be able to improve it. Uh, yeah, we, we really won't be able to improve it at this point, so that's fine. Basic mechanical computer. Let's grab some of that. Oh, we have, yeah, T-72 T is nice. I'll look at all that pee-pee. Just going to core everything we can. And we're out of political power. Beautiful. The American example. And let's do expand the Kurgan mines. Yes, get some more infrastructure. That's good. Homecoming, my friends. Oh, actually, is that a... Ah, that's another infantry division. Wait, what type of divisions? Twenty. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know if I like those twenties. We don't believe in them here. Oh, and oh, you actually have an extra one. Ah, uh, screw it. We'll just use forty-eight. Actually, how many divisions do they have? Oh no, we will have more than enough divisions. That's fine. Wow, we almost have a million manpower too. Look at that. There you go. Get a line and train. We'll be ready. Jonathan Avery looked out the window of the dock he lived in for the past decade and a half or so. He rubbed his eyes, hoping that he wouldn't fall asleep. The CIA officer had been stuck in Russia after the West Russian War had come to a screeching halt. While he had had some contact with Langley sometimes, these moments had been rare. Jonathan always had something to do, however, whether it was training Russian soldiers or attending to a small garden outside. When the car pulled up to his house, he was surprised. Why would the government want to meet with him again? Out stepped members of the Republic Intelligence Service. As they knocked on the door, Jonathan opened it. They said they wanted to talk. Jonathan's stomach dropped as they came in. While his Russian wasn't perfect, it was much better than some of the other agents he had been sent with. As the two men explained to Jonathan the current state of the affairs in the Republic, his eyes grew when he heard that the U.S. had recognized him. As it continued, they said to him that he would be brought to Arkhangelsk, where he would be loaded onto a plane and flown back home to the States. He smiled and tears began to well up in his eyes. He would finally be going home. The two intelligence officers shook his hands and told him to get back to his bags as they had come to pick him up. <clears throat> 
Jonathan rushed around the house, putting everything together he had in Russia into the duffel bag he had brought with him so long ago. As they had driven him to the airport, he looked at the window. He had begun to see many experts of American culture and of the Republic, from people carrying little bottles of Coca-Cola to even a few Fords on the, on the road. As he got to the airport, he shook his hands with the intelligence officers once again. Jonathan boarded the plane, not before turning around and taking one good look at Russia before leaving for good. So long, and thanks for all the help. Goodbye, Russia. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. Cool. I'm going to do that too. That doesn't really matter too much. And as much as I want to do that one, we're probably not going to yet. Uh, combat schooling actually would be really good to get next before we go to war. So actually, let's let's do that one. The People's Marshal. The Grand Marshal Zhukov is a man of the people, born the son of poor Russian peasants who has risen from the masses to lead a Red Army and unite our shattered motherland. From the Civil War to the Great Patriotic War to the War of Re Reunification, Zhukov has fought and bled and struggled for the Soviet people. A soldier forged in the fires of a thousand clashes, Zhukov is an enduring symbol of victory on the battlefield. He is the one who led our people through the hate hard times. He is the one who shall break the Nazis and restore the motherland. Hail to the Grand Marshal, the savior of Russia. Good. Now we can strike Siberia, but I'm pretty sure that's what they're doing against us right now. So let's hold. And if they want to come in, let them come in and we'll smash them to bits. Renewed Soviet patriotism. During the long years of warlordism, many of our people lost a sense of the uh, Soviet patriotism. Either feeling abandoned by our Red Army or uh, leaving them to the warlords, falsely believing that our uh, Soviet motherland was dead once and for all, or being swayed by the crass fascist nationalism of the Tsars and Nationalists, or Tsars and Nazis. It's time for us to once again instill in the people a love for the great Soviet Union. We shall renew our lost patriotism. Oops, my apologies. And remind the people of what they had forgotten. Our Soviet Union is mighty and soon will march to crush the Nazi oppressors. Very good. A speech of the century. Zukov stood above a crowd looking down. He was amazed at the amount of people that had shown up for a simple patriotic speech that he was only planning to inspire a small population of the people of the Republic. However, as he saw very clearly, more people than expected had shown up. Zukov was pacing the room in his mind as he waved to the crowd. He then spoke to the thousands of people gathered there to listen to their leader. Today, we stand on guard. Our enemies tremble in their steps as they have, been, they have seen our rise to power. We have successfully unified the West. Now... However, we must look towards the east. Our power is increasing, and we will unify Russia for our children. Most importantly, however, will be our ongoing fight against the dogs in Moscow. Our home has been taken away from us for far too long. We will return. After Zhukov finished, the crowd erupted into cheers. The Soviet flags have been waved back and forth. He smiled and waved one last time before heading back inside. As he walked back into the Presidium building, he hoped that the Russian, that the Republic would truly live up to the standards he talked about in his speech. However, as he thought, it would take lots of time to see if these aspirations had become true. Onwards to Moscow, my friends. Well, first, let's get to uh, Tomsk first, probably. That'd be good. Eh, let's go and do this one, why not? They can't really beat us at this point, right? They have up to 30 divisions. We have 50-some. So, Oh, they not. They don't even have 30 divisions. Wow. Keep building, 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 my friends. Build, build, build. And ready the nation. The time approaches for the final confrontation with the Nazis, the last great struggle for liberation, the second war for the heart and soul of Russia, so we must be ready for the nation to face it. The last Soviet territory outside of control must be taken by a Red Army, which will march all the way to the Pacific Ocean. Then they will have to march west and face the great enemy head on. If the Soviet people stand united and do their duty to the motherland and the great cause of socialism, we cannot fear it. Calm, comrades, Moscow and Leningrad await. Nice. Oh, there we go. We can do that one, too. And we can do the next uh, development phase eventually. Spend. And uh, I'm not going to cut. Let's, let's actually spend some more for now. Because we will be ready to invade Tomsk and just destroy them. Now we can do that one. Let's do for source for materials as time goes on. Uh, let's grab this one. Oh, this is exactly what I wanted. Levar. There we go. Do that one. Nice. Happy 1971, everyone. It's, it's June 9th, of course, but that's okay. Are we winning? I hope we are. I oh, do a 40 combo with divisions, though. Pretty thick, boys. Pretty darn thick. Do we make these Marines? Yes, 40 combo with. Very nice. Now, I wasn't able to make Marines for everybody or, you know, make, give everyone recon tanks, but that's okay. The people's executive, though. The Soviet system of government was always intended to be a workers' democracy in which the people had the ultimate say, but the ex exigencies, exigencies, 
exigencies, genesis, genesis, of our seemingly endless conflicts with domestic enemies and foreign fascists alike, our armies, made that dream impossible. Yet now workers' democracy is slowly returning to our nation, and we must believe in the power of the Soviet people to choose their own future. The supreme Soviet must be restored along with the presidium, so that the highest levels of the state are once more in the hands of the people. If you like to read about industrial expertise, go right ahead. And we are now the highest level with, well, maybe not, close to the highest level with innovative industry, which is nice. Uh, are we actually there yet? No, we are at the highest level. That is the highest level we can get to. Nice. That's actually really, really good. Very cool. We've lost 15,000 versus 136,000. I don't think they can continue doing this. Uh, they can do it for a little bit longer. But not too much longer. Delegate the powers? Yes, we shall. Despite the dem democratization of our political system, the Soviet government is still overwhelmingly dominated by military men. This made sense when the Red Army needed to maintain strict military discipline in this campaign against the warlords, but now our needs are different. It's time for soldiers and generals to focus on po purely uh, military matters and leave the administration of the state to civilians. Power must be delegated to civilians and out of the hands of the military, while military and civic institutions must be fully distangled. disentangled. Nice. There you go. And anything here? No. Let's do that one. Anything up here? Nope. It's new Soviet state. Don't need that one. And get some more research, because we can. First meeting, Zukov. Has said it, uh, said, said at the long table in the presidium meeting room. Said or sat. As he awaited his two other deputies to arrive, he looked through his notes. The contents of them have been normal procedures. Items like what to talk about during the meeting, ideas that they could bring up, and how the meeting would go. He looked down to his watch, waiting for the hand to strike 11. At this time, both Yakov and Reis... Razkov should arrive for the meeting. As he twisted the open the pen in his finger, or twisted the pen in his fingers, both men entered the room. Both of the men had an aura of power around them to the aides that also entered the room. Zukov's secretary gave him a note saying that all expected members had arrived here. He looked around, noticing some of the men began talking to each other and discussed the contents of the meeting. He then began to speak. Gentlemen, comrades, it is an honor to be speaking to all of you in good health. Today marks a great day for us in the Republic. I called you all here to discuss our next chapter in the government. As I'm sure you know, the Presidium is reformed. He motions to his left and right with the members sitting on each side at lining the table. We are meeting to discuss our government and our next course of action. We are on the very verge of being very close to fully restoring the glory of our former government. Until then, however, we must plan for a glorious restoration until then, and then the continuation of the Great Patriotic War. Like I said, though, we must get to work. Zukov looked at Yakovlev and Reiskov before nodding. Gentlemen, shall we begin? Yes, we shall. And there goes Iran. As we are just blowing up all of our enemies. We lost quite a few guys. Don't get, don't get me wrong, but... They're just going bye-bye. Refound that VKPB. The Front was always a strictly military organization had little place for party organization within its ranks. Yet now, with the reunification of Russia, the people clamor for edu political education and guidance. It's time for us to reforge the party of Lenin, embodying the revolutionary spirit of the October Revolution. The All-Union Communist Party will be the vanguard of the working class, chartering or charting the political course of the Union and organizing the masses for the struggle against the sacred enemies of the USSR. New assignments. Razkov looked down at the letter he'd been sent and slammed it down onto his desk. Water transportation? For a man of his talents? He was furious. Razkov could not believe his eyes when he, as he read what was happening before him. After considerable advice from who, thought Yavkolov, Yakovlev, what advice was given to the presidium on him? Who could be such a menace? Who could be being who could be being such a menace that they have changed committee assignments? Was it the army? Could it have been Zukov himself? Whatever the answer was, he was furious that it had occurred. Ryzkov read the letter one more time before balling it up and throwing it into the trash. Someone else's bad word job thought Yakov left as he tried to get his mind off of it. Across the capital of the Republic. Yakovlev had received a similar letter. Instead of water transportation, it was a committee of coal transportation. Unlike Ryzkov, however, he was more confused and angered. No conspiracies against him. Did he do something wrong? Did he accidentally anger the wrong person? Whatever it was, it was distress him, distressing him a bit. Yakov Love had never done anything wrong. All of his work had been was to benefit the Republic in any way possible. The letter, however, just made him feel disappointed in himself. Whatever, whatever could he have possibly done that made the presidium mad? Whatever it was, he couldn't let his mind wander too much on it. He frowned, feeling upset to himself, and he had gotten so far, so close to being an actual politician for something important, and not a rump state located in Russia. Yakov Love went to bed trying to think of something better, hoping that the next day would bring better news. Don't you just love change? Well, depends on the change, I guess. Cool. Well, not good, not good for him, but whatever. Turret range finders? Uh, we'll probably go with the, a little bit more armor and breakthrough. Beautiful. And looking towards war. The second and final war to liberate this, our Soviet motherland approaches. Everyone knows it. Nobody can escape from the truth of what has come. The last time we faced the Germans, we faltered and lost all but our lives. 
But this time we will not falter. We will be ready, every one of our soldiers armed, prepared, and willing to sacrifice their lives in the struggle for liberation. We'll make the Nazi dogs pay for every humiliation, every martyr, every inch of soil that they have watered with the blood of our people. We will drive out the fascist dogs once and for all, no matter the cost. Such is our destiny. We got a lot more war support. Now look at this. If you want to read about that, please go right ahead. And we have modern industrial equipment. And we're close to getting cutting edge, but we're not quite there yet. Not bad. 18 billion is quite a bit. Black arms trade increases. So be it. And we'll do that one too, because we can. Looking towards war in Krasnaya Armia Visya Silni. The Germans invaded our motherland, but we fought on. They massacred our people, but we resisted. They bombed our remaining cities to oblivion, but we survived. After everything they've done to us, we are still here, the Red Army. They're the last soldiers of the socialist cause in the world, overrun by fascist tyranny. Every blow they've landed against us has only made us stronger. Now we stand before the world, having reunited our fractured nation, unbowed and triumphant. Let the world hear us. We are the Red Army, the last of, of humanity. We plant the red flag on Moscow, then Leningrad, then Germania itself. We will bring the wretched not the order to the ground and show them that once and for all the Red Army is the strongest. Better, slightly better. Uh, coring times and more political power. Sign us up. Yes, yes, please, please. Are we done moving? I'd like to get all the way back over here. Hopefully we get, I really hope we do get an event. Um, oh wow, you're looking really bad. Uh, regarding like getting back to Kam Ch Kamchatka, I think that'd be really cool. Don't worry guys, keep spending, spending, spending. Beautiful and polarizing posters, and which will do Chase the Sun as well. So how do you like this one, Grand Marshal? Asked the artist to Zukov, showing him a mock-up that he had drawn. An order had come down the lines of the government, asking for requests for new posters that are patriotic and invoke a sense of willingness. Alec was one of the artisans or artists who had answered this call to arms. In the weeks come upcoming to the showing, he created nearly 20 different posters, all with different themes. They ranged from simple images of a united Russia on pose, with a flag of the Republic draped over it, to the much more complex art of a soldier blocking a large German soldier from a family. I quite like the colors in the art, however. I feel that one is too brash, if I'm being honest with you, boy. Can I see the next one? Replied Zukov. The poster was the one with the flag of the Reichs Commissary at Moscow being melted and the flag of the Republic being formed from the ashes of it. While Alec had liked it when he, he had been drawing it, he couldn't disagree with the Grand Marshal on this. The colors looked very dark and brooding compared to some of the other posters he had seen. Alec then pulled out another poster. I quite like this one. Do you mind explaining it to me? Said Zukov to, the, to this poster, unlike the others. This one evoked a sense of pride. Zukov's interest definitely increased. The poster was a vivid one with a man standing on a hill. Behind him was a ship in the water with its gun raised, tanks and land following him, and planes flying above him. The colors have been the ones of red and blues. The text on the bottom read, Onwards to the German's doorstep. Zuko then smiled, We have a winner. Nice. We can't do this one, we need more stability for this. That's fine, whatever. Uh, go do that one. Cool. And of course, we're finishing up the, the focus stream with Chase the Sun. Even though we started taking over the AI in its current position, wherever it was. We're still doing very, very well. Actually, incredibly well, I would say. Uh, we have none, huh? Well, that's not good. Why do we have no none? Oh, we need more rubber. Black market order fail. I still don't do that stuff, but whatever. Get it from the Japanese. Now we should have more than enough APCs being made. And maybe tankos. Oh, there you go. Oh, go ahead, infantry. Go ahead. We lost, what, 100,000? Ah, 75,000 versus over half a million. They have up to 13 divisions left. Not too bad, not too bad. New business, not bad for them. No manpower. Up to 13 divisions max. Very, very good. I wasn't even paying attention to this. And maybe you guys were up. I definitely wasn't. Um, anything else here? Not really. Chase the sun, my friends. It seems like we're always chasing the sun. It keeps The ball of fire keeps going up and down every day. And if you'd like to read about better research facilities, please go right ahead, my friends. Modern research facility? At this point, technology doesn't really matter too much. Let's get some more soft attack and piercing, shall we? Yes, we shall. 19 billion is quite a big number. I don't know if you knew that, but it's, it's quite a big number, you know? It's quite a big number. Keep building, building, building. There will be no stops on our way for better GDP. <laughs> uh, what's the next one we could do? Oh, appease these guys, that's fine. Yeah, it's, it's weird because we went down any pretty much Yakov left, but regardless of Ra, it doesn't seem like it doesn't give us anything, so... Yeah, we got to do his reforms, but other than that, that was pretty much it. Oh, wrong one. A little disappointing about that. A little disappointed. Not bad. Keep building, building, building. Ah, so much construction. I love it. I hope you love it as well. Look at all this. We definitely have a good industrial base. 356 factories. No dockyards. Pretty normal. 
Pretty normal. Rubber processing is pretty good. And can we cut down trade? Nope, not really too much. Still moving in, still moving in. The tanks are looking pretty weak. A little weak sauce here, but that's alright. Oh, do you have any upgrades? No? Victor, how about you? No? Okay, okay. Uh, tanks at all? You know what? Maybe not the tanks. Just gotta take a break. Come on up here, guys. Black market available, which I don't really care for, but hey, it is what it is. Actually, when is this going to... Oh, let's close this one. Actually, you know what? Maybe we'll, we'll click on it because we... Oh, there we go. Well, I guess we're not going to click on it since we have to core everything. And let's pause the game sound. Return to the front. Hail Grand Marshal Zukov. If you'd like to read about this, please go right ahead. I like those helmets, though. The government of Germany has not yet made a response to the Russian reunification, but reports are filtering in and they are mobilizing the troops on the border. Cool, not bad. So that's going to be probably the end of the campaign for us here. So Dusk approaches the New Order. It's been a lot of fun. It was incredibly fun going from Kamchatka, racing to just leave as fast as you possibly could before Alexander Men just decided to smash us with his divine holy crosses and then for us to get all the way back to our Congos, losing two, like, destroyers. And then playing as a WRF to unite Russia, playing as Zukov, which I hadn't done before, which was a lot of fun, especially taking over the AI, seeing what they, what they normally do you know, you know when they play as a warlord. So, regardless, I hope you enjoyed the campaign. If you did, leave a like, subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow in a different campaign. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.